Hello, the purpose of this quick little Anytime Anywhere workshop is to show instructors how using their Grade Center that they can have students submit files and then download all of the files at once in a little zip package so that they can be graded offline without being connected to Blackboard. All right, so here we have a Grade Center of an English course where we have some essays that have been submitted. And you can see that the essays are submitted by these little green exclamation marks that you see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the little chevron icon that you see here above the column or next to the column name to actually download all of the files that have been submitted into this column. So we're going to click on the little chevron and the menu will open and at the very bottom is an assignment file download and that's what you would like to select. Okay, so you can take a look here in this sample class and you see that some of them have been submitted, some of them have not been, and the ones that have been have a little checkbox. So you could either spend the time checking every little single box or you can just click this little Select All button at the very top and Blackboard will do that for you. So now the last thing to do, let me scooch you over here and I'll show you, the last thing to do is to click the Submit button at the bottom of the screen. Alright, once the Submit button has been submitted, you will see that you have this little Download Assignments Now button and that will allow you to click on that little link and actually download a zip package that contains all of the files that have been submitted in that column. So I'm going to right click and tell it save link as so that it will actually save that zip package onto my desktop. <clears throat> and I'm going to scoot this little window out of the way and show you that here is the little zip package. That's the zip package that I just downloaded. So let me get Blackboard out of the way for a second and let's take a look at this little zip package. I'm going to double click on it and take a look inside it. And it'll open up a folder on your desktop and in that folder will contain all of the assignments that the students have sent you. Now if we look at this in list format you'll see that you will probably have more than one file per student. If the student wrote any kind of comments in the comments section, then you'll see that you will have a text file like this one here. And the text file will contain the comments the students may have written you. And then there will be a document to go with that, which is the actual file that they submitted. You can see this one was saved in an RTF format, whereas this one here was saved in a Word doc format. This is Word 2003. This file here with the docx extension was saved in Word 2007, so the instructor would have to have Word 2007 installed on their computer to be able to open this particular file. So what you can then easily do with Blackboard is you can close Blackboard and actually, you know, log out if you want to, and then you can spend some time opening up the documents in Word and reading them and using balloons in documents or track changes or whatever you would like to do to write on the documents and provide feedback to your students. If you are going to do that, I recommend that you use the Save As command and save their original paper with your comments under a different name than the original paper was. That way you preserve the original. I recommend tacking the word graded onto their file name just so that you can tell which ones have been graded and which ones were the originals. And then you later can go back into Blackboard, into the gradebook, and you can upload their finished file so that they can see their finished file and they can see your comments and they can also do that while they're checking their grades. So let's take a look at how that would be done. For example, if I wanted to provide feedback to this particular student, I would click on the chevron next to their name and go into Grade Details. In Grade Details, and be very careful because these are tiny little buttons over here on the right, you'll see a View Attempt, Clear Attempt, and Modify Attempt buttons. These buttons allow you to access the file that was submitted. So all the instructor needs to do is click this View Attempt button 
and the comments, and if there's a file attached, the file will be listed here. In this instance, the student put all of the writing in the comments area instead of coming down here to the browse button and attaching a file. I do not recommend this because this comment area up here at the top does have a character limit and they will not have as much space to write in and it doesn't have spell checking or grammar checking capabilities. So I would recommend that you tell your students to be sure to copy and paste their, their document using, don't, to, in other words, to not copy and paste their text into the comments field to instead do their work in a Word document, save the Word document, and then attach the Word document to their, their um, posting. <clears throat> and then, well, you can, then you can come in and put the point value here for this particular student's work. And then this browse here that says attach local file, this is for the instructor to browse and find that graded file that has your comments saved into it and attach that here so that when the student checks their grade, they'll also see the link to the document that the instructor attached. And that way you can send back instructions or comments on their original file file in addition to any comments you would like to type here. So the instructor can type comments in this comment box and if you'll notice there is in the bottom right corner an ABC check button that is the spell check button so that you can spell check your comments that you're sending back to your students. Now if you look down here there's also a field called instructor notes. These comments that you type in this box are not visible to the students. This is where you write notes to yourself about about minus five points because it was a day late. These are things that you want to remember as to why you remove points from a paper of a student. That way if they call you, you have everything, the student, the paper, the graded, the original, and your notes to yourself about that particular grade. So it makes everything kind of in one place. So after you're done doing your comments to your student, their grade back, a connected or attached file here that has your comments, any instructor notes that you would like to add. The final thing that you do is you click the submit button and that will attach all of that information to that particular grade in your gradebook. Now I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to make changes to this active class so I'm going to click cancel. So you use the view attempt button instructors to open the documents and view the files. You can do that individually instead of downloading them one at a time. And then instead of clicking the OK button and going back into the gradebook, you can just come up to this upper right hand corner here where it says user here and you can use the arrow to go from one user to the next to the next where you have files that you need to grade. And that's a quick little time saver because it saves you having to click OK and then wait for the grade center to load and then go back down to grade details for the next particular student. So it's an awful lot of clicking that just using those arrows will save you. So that's the end of this quick little tutorial on how to download your files and grade them offline, but then come back and upload any, opt any um, attempted grade numbers and comments and return files with comments to the student. Now see this particular student did it correctly because you see here that they have attached a Word document file instead of typing all of their comments into the comment field. So this is the correct thing. So if this student has done that, then all you'd have to do is click this link and it will launch Word and it will open the file live and you can look at it. However, it doesn't allow you the opportunity to save anything that you may add to this file. So you need to make sure that you have a copy saved offline. Alright, so as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at klingbergj at tncc.edu.